Our seasonal journey with Grogu and Din Djarin ended with the Mandalorian Chapter 24, The Return. This year's adventure included a trip to fix an old friend, unite a fractured tribe, scavenge a wrecked planet, and much more. Bo-Katan Kryze, former leader of the Death Watch, was also very visible during the season. The former Mandalorian leader now holds the Darksaber, but at the end of Chapter 23, we were all shocked and gasped. Moff Gideon returns wearing new Beskar plated armor. He wanted to deprive the Mandalorian homeworld of its most desirable resource. He also convinced the Shadow Council to send him elite Praetorian guards. Paz Vizsla was destroyed by the guards while buying Bo-Katan time to escape. But now the trio of Mando, Bo, and Grogu find themselves trapped by Gideon. The episode begins with Din Djarin being rescued with the assistance of Grogu. My questions about a secret spy within the Mandalorian tribe were also answered in the episode. Axe Woes was one suspect I remember contemplating. However, in my eyes, he was the most important help this entire episode. He darted up to the Mandalorian fleet to warn the others of the Imperial ambush on their way. He took over the ship and gave others time to escape. The other Mandalorians fled below in their own ships to help Bo-Katan. Meanwhile, Din and Grogu reach for Moff Gideon and R5-D4 reappears in the finale to help the heroes find the hiding Imperial Warlord. Even with massive fears, the droid proves to be a success. The Imperial ambush on the Mandalorian flagship begins in the sky. After securing his helmet, Axe decides to take the ship down to the atmosphere. Much respect to the character for basically risking it all. I also like to thank Rick Famawa for his directorial work. He's directed a total of six episodes for the show, and I can't wait to see his upcoming work in the upcoming Ahsoka Disney Plus series. And he should have a really well-paced episode based on the stuff he's directed on the show. And the show's music is just outstanding. I've enjoyed the different variants that, of the title theme that we've gotten this season. In comparison to other Star Wars film projects, the show just feels right in tone overall. I also gotta give Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni a ton of credit as being the showrunners of the show. Bo-Katan and her fleeing troops seek underground refuge from the Empire. The survivors of the Great Purge say that they were able to farm old indigenous plant life underground. Bo-Katan, impressed by the feat, is later notified that her cavalry has arrived. The armorer flies alongside the rest of the Mandalorian fleet through the dark clouds above. As they fly off to regroup, Bo-Katan tells her people that it's time for them to take back their world. Din and Grogu are drawing even closer to Moff Gideon, but there are shield barriers that are holding them back. R5 assists them again and shuts down each wall one by one. Even with mouse droids interferences, R5 assists the heroes in getting through Gideon's security. Grogu and Mando enter a dark room full of Moff Gideon clones. Even though they were all terrified, they were able to drown and destroy the clones. Moff Gideon is irritated, but his reinforcements are busy after the Mandalorian's return for blood. The entire tribe darts downward with their jetpacks to save their planet. Mando and Grogu are inches away from Moff Gideon, and he says that his clones had potential to be something greater after being infused with the Force. This obviously is a reference of the outcome of him drawing Grogu's blood during his capture way back in the beginning of the show. Gideon lost his four sensitive clones and seeks vengeance now. He and Din meet for battle as the elite Praetorian guards emerge. Gideon stumps Din's effort to save the child as they corner Grogu. There is no time to cry as Axe Wolves rides the sinking and burning ship further down to the atmosphere. He warns Bogotan and Koska Reeves, played by pro wrestler Mercedes Vernado, that the ship is sinking to the base. Bo-Katan goes down to assist Mando in escaping Moff Gideon to get to Grogu. But Bo finds herself face to face with Moff Gideon now. She fights him in combat with the Darksaber, and Grogu is meanwhile playing with the guards. But he comes way too close to danger and falls down the above rails. He is nearly a goner until Mando appears. The two rally and defeat the guards with the sweet combo of the Force and Elite Mandalorian combat. Axe Wolves exits the sinking ship in time before the flames could reach him. But Bo-Katan fails to outperform Moth Gideon and loses the Darksaber. The Warlord brags about salvaging the planet and saying that Mandalorians are very weak, minus their trinkets and medals. Bo-Katan, on the other hand, tells them that Mandalorians are stronger together. Mando and Grogu arrive to assist her in disarming and defeating Gideon. He nearly shoots Grogu before Mando slides in and guards him with guns blazing. Bo also defends Grogu with her shield before the ship sinks into the base's core. 
Gideon is engulfed by the flames of the destruction. Grogu, meanwhile, uses his force shield to protect him and the others from the raging fire. The blazing crash fires burn out and the trio can finally breathe. The next day, a ceremony is held by the tribe at the Mandalorian Living Waters. The armorer bathes Ragnar's head in the sacred water as he takes the oath. Din arrives and requests that the armorer add Grogu to the song to become an apprentice. The armorer informs him that Grogu is unable to say the oath and does not have a parent to speak for him. Mando decides to adopt Grogu and the armorer agrees in telling him that this is the way. Din must now go on adventures with his adopted son Grogu Jaren, just like his old teacher did. Below the tribe in the waters, a resting mythosaur sleeps. Later on, Mandalorians from both tribes are present at the Great Forge. The armor hands a flame torch to Bogotan to light the Great Forge. As the flames light up the planet again, all the Mandalorians let out a loud unified chant for Mandalore. Mando and his son travel to a Delphi base where he meets Captain Teva. He requests to be an independent contractor to work alongside his son on particular missions. Teva agrees and follows up on another request from Mando. Grogu glanced over at an IG-11's detached head. Mando requests the droid's head because he needs it for parts. The two fly to Navarro to meet with Grieve Karga and Mando receives a deed to a new house in isolation between missions. He gives Karga and the town a newly assembled IG-11 unit tasked with protecting and assisting Navarro citizens. The two retreat to their home after a sweet homecoming. Grogu plays with the frog-like creature as Mando sits back and observes the land that he's just garnered. That was the season and I enjoyed the finale to be honest. I know there were a ton of theories out there on the finale and where the show's expectations were at. The clone plotline could have used a little bit more focus, especially with Dr. Pershing. But that plotline wasn't exclusive to the Mandalorian, so it could be explored in other places. This could be all part of explaining exactly how Palpatine returned somehow in the Rise of Skywalker. The Mandalorian show may be focused on an assembly of Mandalorians moving forward, but that did not prevent me from enjoying the show this season. I'm a huge fan of Din Djarin, and I believe his story is not over. A Din Djarin and Grogu focused film were emerging at Star Wars Celebration in April. I could see the whole Mandalorian storyline moving forward with Bo-Katan, Boba Fett, and Din Djarin. And I loved how the show is expanding and merging with the overall Star Wars universe. I'm glad the season ended with Moff Gideon's end while teasing a future threat, and I believe that the show did what it needed to do this season. The Admiral Thrawn teases obviously lead to a big role moving forward in the Star Wars universe. My only concern centers on the show's main lead. Pedro Pascal's face was not present for the whole season, and Pedro Pascal was rumored to be in some sort of drama with the crew, and I think real problems behind the scenes just felt apparent as well. I believe that he may return to finish the role in a film and shoot some cameos, but I'm not sure what happens after that. Grogu is a character I do not see Disney getting rid of anytime soon, but this season I would give the show an 8 out of 10. The show had some bumps on the road that are simple to fix to be quite honest. A season highlight for me though was seeing Ahmed Best return to Star Wars in a very heroic manner. But let me know what you guys thought of the show, did it meet your expectations? And if so, what are some of your favorite highlights from the finale and from the season? Share all those thoughts down below. Thank you for watching today's video and I hope that you enjoyed today's topic. If you could hit that sub button, that would be awesome. Hit that like button and boost my video up on the algorithm. Click that bell so you don't miss any of my videos that get uploaded. And if you have some time to spare, check out some of these videos on your screen right now.